Welcome to Learning with Philemon. In this video, we will be looking at how to calculate mass from chemical equations. Please make sure you review the previous three videos on the playlist before you watch this one, as this video builds on the concepts discussed. In the previous videos, we have seen that in a balanced equation, there will be the same number and types of atoms on both sides of the equation. In this reaction, nitrogen gas N2 reacts with oxygen gas O2 to form nitrogen monoxide gas NO. Note that the G in the parentheses shows the state the chemicals are in. In this case, they are all gases. According to the law of conservation of mass, in chemical reactions, atoms cannot be created nor destroyed. Therefore, if you start with two nitrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms, you must end up with two nitrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. There is no change in the number or types of atoms. The atoms have simply rearranged, forming a new molecule. In a chemical reaction, you will rarely have only two molecules reacting with each other, as shown in the diagram. On the contrary, you may have several moles of each reactant. Remember that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23, Avogadro's constant. If you react one mole of nitrogen and one mole of oxygen in a container, that means you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of each molecule present. A balanced equation not only tells us the identity of the reactants and the products, but also the amount of each required for the reaction to occur. This information is given by the coefficients, the numbers in front of each chemical. Both nitrogen and oxygen have a coefficient of 1. Note that the 1 is not written. This means that every nitrogen molecule needs one oxygen molecule to react with. If you have one mole of nitrogen molecules, you need one mole of oxygen molecules for all of them to react. The coefficient of 2 in front of nitrogen monoxide tells us that for every nitrogen molecule or oxygen molecule that react, two nitrogen monoxide molecules are formed. There is a ratio of 1 to 2. If all the molecules react, you must make 2 moles or 12.04 times 10 to the 23 nitrogen monoxide molecules. You cannot make more than 2 moles because then atoms have been created out of thin air. You cannot make less than 2 moles because then atoms have been destroyed. In both cases, the law of conservation of mass would be violated. Now let's see how mass is related to all of this. A typical stoichiometry question is phrased like this. If 14 grams of nitrogen are reacted with oxygen, how many grams of nitrogen monoxide are formed? The first step in a stoichiometry question is to calculate the number of moles. See the previous video on more guidance on this. The moles of nitrogen are calculated by dividing the mass by the molecular mass. The molecular mass of nitrogen is simply the atomic mass of nitrogen 14 multiplied by 2. 14 grams of nitrogen are equivalent to 0.5 mole. The second step is to determine the number of moles of nitrogen monoxide formed. Since there is a 1 to 2 ratio, 1 mole of nitrogen makes 2 moles of nitrogen monoxide. In this case, only 0.5 moles of nitrogen are present, so only 1 mole of nitrogen monoxide can be made. The third step is to determine the mass of nitrogen monoxide formed. This can be done by multiplying the moles by the molecular mass. The molecular mass of nitrogen monoxide is equal to the atomic mass of nitrogen plus the atomic mass of oxygen. A common mistake made when calculating the molecular mass is multiplying the atomic masses by the coefficient. Only the molecular formula, NO in this case, should be considered. The calculation gives us that 30 grams of nitrogen monoxide are formed when 14 grams of nitrogen are reacted with oxygen. At this stage, it seems like the law of conservation of mass is violated as we have gone from 14 grams to 13 grams. We have somehow created mass. However, this is because we have not considered the mass of the oxygen molecules. If the same number of moles of oxygen are reacted with nitrogen, 0.5 mole, 
we can calculate the mass of oxygen. This is equal to 16 grams. The reactants have a total mass of 30 grams, equivalent to that of the products. Therefore, the law of conservation of mass is met. Unfortunately, the ratio of coefficients is not always as simple as 1 to 2. In this made-up reaction, we have 2a plus b yields 3c plus 5d. If we have one mole of A, how can we figure out the moles of the rest of the reactants and products? When the coefficients are more complicated, you can use the following equation. The moles of the unknown species are equal to the moles of the known species divided by the coefficient of the known species and then multiplied by the coefficient of the unknown species. To calculate the moles of C, we divide the moles of A, 1, by the coefficient of A, 2, and then we multiply by the coefficient of C, 3. Therefore, one mole of A would form 1.5 moles of C. The same method can be used for the rest of the species. A would need to react with 0.5 moles of B. 2.5 moles of D would be formed. As we saw in this example, if you know the moles of one reactant or product, you can figure out the number of moles of the rest of the species. In order to avoid confusion in these types of questions, I would recommend that you always use the following three steps. Firstly, calculate the number of moles using the equation n is equal to m over mr. Secondly, find the moles of the other species using this equation or the ratio of coefficients. Finally, calculate the mass using the equation m is equal to n multiplied by mr. Thank you for listening. To consolidate your learning, try to answer the questions in the description. If you haven't already, please subscribe for more content. Stay curious.